Welcome to another Fairhope Public Library Makerspace Maker Monday video. Today we're going to talk about mandalas. If you spend any time at all on Pinterest, I'm sure you've seen mandalas popping up in your feed, especially if you're interested in stuff like drawing, bullet journaling, or zentangling. Mandalas as an art form go way back in history and show up in many cultures. The word mandala is Sanskrit and basically means a circle. Buddhists have used mandalas for centuries as a meditation tool, both in the contemplation of them and also in the creation. The radial symmetry exhibited in a mandala makes the eye rove in circles, seeing the same shapes in new ways as you travel around the form. Nowadays, the mandala has become a more casual art form, and while some people enjoy purely because of their beauty, many people make them to be able to tap into a sense of peace and calm that you can feel when you're drawing them. Lots of people use them in bullet journals to record daily experiences, like keeping track of chores or working toward a financial or health goal. Or, you know, just because they're fun to draw and beautiful to look at. The easiest way to make a mandala is to draw a circle and start filling it in with shapes, usually from the center outward. If you want more precision, you can divide your circle into sections and fill it in by repeating the shapes in each section to create that radial symmetry that makes mandalas so compelling. And while it is pretty easy to divide a circle into an even number of parts, there's something about odd numbers that's just a bit more interesting to the eye. One of the more obvious natural mandala shapes is a flower and many flowers have odd numbers of petals. Which brings us to today's project, an odd number mandala design tool. To make your own mandala tool for dividing a circle into odd numbered sections, you're going to need a clear lid from um, some kind of, you know, lemonade or powdered substance that you put into water to make something delicious. You're going to need a pencil and a fine point marker like this. It's got to have a skinny, skinny point so that it'll fit through the holes that we're going to make with our handy dandy thumbtack. You're also going to need a ruler. You can use any kind you want. I like to use the centimeter side because then I only have to divide by 10 or think in fives and tens, which is easier. And then you're gonna need one of these guys, protractor, with all of the uh, numbers of the angles. And then you're probably going to want a calculator, unless you enjoy doing math on paper in your head, you smart person you. I like doing it with the calculator. First thing we're going to do is find the center point and punch a hole. Now when you feel this, one side is going to be somewhat smooth and one side is gonna have that little bump there, little sharp bump. Probably that is the point in which the plastic was injected into the mold. I'm not completely sure, but that's usually what that means when you have that little sharp thing on the edge of a piece of plastic. So the first thing you're going to do is get your thumbtack, find the center Go from the flat side, it's gonna be really hard to go down the, uh, make the pin go on that bumpy side. So find the flat side and just poke straight through the center. Now, it doesn't have to be the exact perfect center of your piece of plastic because this is, whatever your hole is, is going to be the exact center. If it doesn't quite match up with the edge, it's not that big a deal unless it's an aesthetic thing for you and you want it to look beautiful. Now I'm wiggling this thumbtack a whole bunch in here because I want to enlarge this hole enough so that I can get the tip of the Sharpie through it because that's how we're gonna hold it. And it'll also be easier to draw. So pencil or Sharpie, either one. All right, so let me just test that. Looks like it goes through just fine. Next thing we're gonna do is get a piece of paper that we're going to use. To get our angles, these guys, and get them onto this piece of plastic. So find the side that you wanna work down with. Um, this one is pretty much, because of the rim here, 
this part is actually closer to the paper. It's easier for me to flatten it down. Uh, this side could do that same thing, but I'm going to use this side because it's just a little easier. Whichever side you choose, stick with it and be consistent because that's going to what's going to help you make this as perfect as possible. So first thing I'm going to do is find my center point there. So that is sticking my pencil through the center point that I made with the thumbtack. And now I'm going to start making my angles. Now, I already did my calculations ahead of time. I know that I want to do um, a five and a seven and a nine as far as my angles go. So to start off with this, I'm going to put the center line right here where my center was and make the zero line. Next thing I'm gonna do is count for my five sections of my circle. 360 divided by five is 72. So I'm gonna count up here to 72. Here's 70, 71, 72. Make myself a little dot there. When I connect two lines, I like to use my writing implement to line up whatever it is I'm using as my straight edge. And then I can move it however I want to get over there. All right, so just to remind myself, I'm going to go ahead and make a little line here and say 72 degrees. That's what I wanna remember. So 72 times five is gonna be 360 and we're gonna get a nice consistent angle here all the way through. So first thing I'm gonna do, get my pencil and my Sharpie. I'm going to put my pencil through the hole and put it back on that original dot. Oops, I forgot something. You wanna know exactly how far away from the center point you're gonna go. I'm gonna go with 15 centimeters. I wanna eventually put three circles here and I don't want them to get too close to each other. So the first one is gonna be 15 millimeters from the center point. So there's 10 and here's 15. So once again, let's do this. Got my pencil right there on top of the center point. And the first thing I'm going to do is make a point right there on top of the point I just made on the zero line. I'm gonna push that guy up here to the 72 degree mark. Make another point right there. Push that guy up till he's on the 72 mark, 72 degree mark. And I'm just gonna keep going till I get to the end here. There's one more. So there's my five points that are each 72 degrees apart. And now I shall poke. Try not to poke yourself, especially try not to poke yourself under the fingernail because, oh man, does that ever hurt. All right, here's my fifth little hole. There it is. It's pretty good. Um, if we were going to make a little doodle here with these guys, let's see. Let's see how good it looks. We can test it by making a little star. Let's see. Can you get through there? Yep. Let's see how good we, how good a star we made here. That looks pretty dang good. I'm pretty happy with that. So as you can see, it's not too difficult. You just have to do some math and you have to have a few basic tools. You can uh, keep going for any number. It doesn't have to be odd numbers. 
It could be any number. I like the way odd numbers look when you do radial symmetrical designs. So, you know, you can keep going and make whatever numbers you want. Just be mindful of the fact that you can't go too far up here unless you have one of those bigger lids from some other kind of product, you know? But start saving them. Maybe you can make these. And uh, you know, maybe you and your friends can have a mandala party. That would be super fun. Maybe that's one of the programs we can do up here in the makerspace. Once we get out of phase two, get the virus under control and actually start having programming again, guys. It'll be so fun. So maybe we can do that again. So please, if you've watched this video, make a ma make a mandala and give us a picture of it in the Facebook on the Facebook page for the Makerspace at FHPL. We'd love to see your mandalas. I'll post some of mine too. Again, uh, this has been a Fairhope Public Library Maker Monday video from the Makerspace. Come back again next Monday. And if there's something you'd like to see, maybe give us a suggestion of a video you'd like. Feel free to share that with us and let's see what we can get going. I'm Allison. I'm the maker up here. Hope to see you guys one day soon. Bye now. All right, now that we've got our template to make odd numbered sections on a circle, let's go ahead and make a mandala.